What's up guys, welcome to my Retribution Paladin guide tips and tricks for the Emerald Nightmare Raid on Heroic Difficulty, patch 7.1. Now in this video I hope to show you what I am thinking, what I do as I DPS each fight individually, and what talents I pick and just things you can consider and try out. You, I do want to note this is not a how to do DPS guide in general. For that I do have a link to my video in the description below. And you'll be able to follow along with what spell I've just cast on the left hand side of the screen just to kind of help you guys follow along a bit easier. Now for Nathendra, I have the standard talent setup. I didn't have a huge amount of crits, so I'm using Blade of Wrath with the resets. And Crusade, of course, and Divine Intervention for shorter Divine Shields. Now at the start of the fight, don't forget to pre-pot. Old War does a lot of damage for you as a ret pally, so very, very important. So I go in, pre-pot, Wake of Ashes, Judgment, Crusade, and kind of off to the races. Now you'll notice I don't have Might active right now. That is, of course, a mistake. You should just have that up before the fight starts. It doesn't change your playstyle, but it does just give you free damage, so please remember to do that. And you'll notice I'm spamming Blade of Justice as much as possible because I'm just expecting lots of resets, especially during Crusade. Now, I don't get Rot at the start here, but if you do, you do, of course, have to run out. And you have a couple options if you do have to run out there. One is... Blade of Justice, and it's the first one I recommend if it's off cooldown, because it's got the shortest range, so eventually you'll be out of range of hitting the boss with it. And then, of course, Judgment, and if you have that golden trait for Divine Storm that throws it forward, then you can use that at range as well. It does go forward 20 yards, so a decent choice there if you need to. Now, other than that, Nathendra is pretty much a target dummy, unless you get Rot. So other things, of course, that you might have to consider are healing and defensives. Now you notice there, I saw Wake of Ashes was coming up, and so I emptied my Holy Power to make sure that I didn't waste any when I used it, so I got the full 5 without wasting any. You will sometimes occasionally just end up with one that sticks because maybe you get a proc of Fires of Justice, or you, know, you have to wait for Crusader Strike, or something like that. But that's not the end of the world, you can still do that, but try to get it to zero as much as possible. So at this point you're just dodging breath, during DPS, keeping an eye on that Wake of Ashes, again, you see I emptied it, my Holy Power, before using Wake of Ashes. And now in Phase 2, you want to dodge as much as possible. If you can't survive, if you can't do DPS well without dying, then don't. And you can also use things like here, Divine Shield. I notice I'm getting kind of cornered. I'm like, mm, I don't want to risk it. I don't want to waste any, you know, too, too much. So I'll just pop Divine Shield. You can stand in whatever at that point, and then just continue to DPS. Of course, do know that it's an 8-second timer, so... Make sure you don't lose your Divine Shield as you're standing in something bad. Now you come out of that, and your Crusade should be up. It's a, it lines up very nicely with the Phase 1, Phase 2 transitions. And so you build as much Holy Power, pop Crusade, and in this case I do get Rot. That's a little unfortunate. So I'll just use some ranged abilities on the way out. You know, Like I mentioned, Blade of Justice, Judgment, and Divine Storm. Over there I did heal a little bit, pop the defensive, my Shield of Vengeance, just to reduce the damage I was taking from the Rot, so the healers don't have to work as hard, and you get back in and do some extra damage. Note that your Divine Shield will not be up every Rot, or every Phase 2, because it's two and a half minutes at best, and the phases are about two minutes, so the next time that we get Heart of the Swarm going, you want to make sure that you do dodge, or if you don't use it on the first one, then you can use Divine Shield, and things like that. So, again, just focusing on resets if you're using Blade of Wrath here. And here I walk out and I do Divine Storm again. I start healing because I'm taking a significant amount of damage. I do like to drop rots by, of course, other rots and things like that. And then you get back in and do some DPS. Keep an eye on your Wake of Ashes timer. So you can kind of plan, as you see here, empty my Holy Power, Wake of Ashes, get that 5 Holy Power again. And then continue on. So here, just of course, dodge breath, keep DPSing. And then as phase 2 approaches, remember we don't have Divine Shield in my case here because I used it already. So you have to be more careful in dodging stuff. Now, on Heroic it's not the end of the world if you pick up stacks running through green stuff. As long as you avoid bugs, it's not too too bad. So in this case I notice I get kind of cornered in and I'm like, hmm, it's not too good. So what I'll do is I see Shield of Vengeance is coming up off cooldown. So I pop that immediately. And of course if you really need emergency heal you could lay on hands. For Ilganoth, we're going to be the same talents, except I want Blinding Light for that AoE. That kind of small AoE damage burst. And everything else is pretty similar. So I start the fight, start off on a tentacle, I pop my cooldowns, do my opening rotation. 
And we do end up one phasing this fight. I will leave this tentacle early because I do want to get my crusade not wasted. So I want to get over to the other one as fast as possible because I never kill it quickly. Now if we, we one phase this as I mentioned. So if you do not kill the heart in one phase, it'll just be more of the same kind of stuff. Just look out for situations in which you can take advantage of AoE cleave. Now as soon as the tentacles die, we start killing the I-Cores. Now I go and finish off this tentacle really quickly. And of course what you're going to want to do is Divine Storm. Now having that projected Divine Storm is very good. Now here I pop Shield of Vengeance so I can stand in an explosion or two and the shield will blow up and do some damage. So it both helps the damage and kind of reduces the damage I take. Also Blinding Light if you don't have a Divine Storm ready just for some nice AoE there. And then of course Blade of Justice you can use at range a little bit and make sure you Judgment when you can to get that extra damage buff up on a couple targets. Now uh, you can use the eye to build up holy power if you if you want to. Of course, you won't ha get damage from it really, but it will help you, you know, immediately burst and such. Here, wake of ashes is up, so I empty my holy power, use wake of ashes, and just kind of single target DPS rotation on this add. Now, as soon as corruptors come up, generally you should switch over to them, and then if they're clumped at all, you can kind of cleave them down depending on what you need. Of course, if you need to prioritize really hard because you're progressing or something, make sure you Templar's Verdict the ones you're supposed to be killing. But if they're clumped like this, or close enough, you know, you see I Divine Storm here, get some extra AoE damage going, bring them all down, because all relevant DPS, and then move over and interrupt the Death Cloud Tentacles when possible. It's a little messier for Wake of Ashes, but just kind of keep it in mind. And the reason I'm not using it here is I'm saving it for the AoE on the i -Cores. and it's not just for meter padding Although, of course, you can do it for that as well. But just remember that Wake of Ashes also slows, so it keeps them in position longer if they're already on the eye. And it's very helpful to have. If you need maximum DPS on the heart, save it for inside. But if you don't, if you know that your guild, your team can kill it pretty handily, then you can use it on the eye cores to help out. Again, the slows, the AoE damage, and all of that. Very, very useful. Now at this point, of course, you can Blinding Light again, Shield of Vengeance if you need to for some extra AoE damage. Whatever gets you the i cores kill whatever kills them fast and in the correct place. Don't forget Blade of Justice ranged again, so you can always use that as you walk out of the explosions. Now on the inside, pretty simple to DPS race, so build up five holy power if you can, and then just go off to the races, you know, pre or second pot, use judgment, use crusade, and kind of DPS here. Use whatever defensive you need to, of course, you have multiple You've got your Shield of Vengeance, if you still have it up, you've got your Divine Shield, and you have Lay on Hands that are useful in here. Now again, if you don't kill this heart in one phase, make sure that you are taking advantage of any kind of cleave opportunities to use Divine Storm, like the Corruptor Tentacles in the second phase one tend to be pretty close to each other on the left or the right, so you know, you save your Wake of Ashes for that, save your Divine Storms, and things like that. But essentially it's the same as phase one, the first one, just more hectic. So take advantage of cleave situations when you can, and when it's appropriate. So for Elorath, we've got the same talent setup. Just basically using Blinding Light in case you need to do some AoE. Although I don't always remember to use that here because the adds tend to die pretty quickly. I tend to have lots of Holy Power to spend anyway. Again, using Blade of Wrath because I don't have enough crit to make Virtue's Blade worth it. So go in, pop your cooldowns, pre-pot and all that. Note that she will jump up during your burst. The feeding time is pretty quick. So try to squeeze in as many Templar's Verdicts as possible. You see I squeeze one here right at the end just to make sure that we do get... Here it is. So I try to jump to get a little bit of vertical closeness to her and squeeze in that last Templar's Verdict. And build up Holy Power and prepare to cleave on the adds once they get grouped up. Now in this group, on Heroic at least, we do stack up the adds on the boss. So you can just cleave them down pretty easily off the boss. If your group separates them, go ahead and chase the adds down if you're supposed to. Of course, AoE them, Wake of Ashes on the adds if possible, just to get maximum damage out of that. And you see Necrotic Venom if you get it. You saw me mouse over the timer to see how much time I had left. And you do have some time, so you can wait their DPS a little and then dash out. Now, Divine Shield to drop all the stacks kind of in the same location ish. And you can do that if you want to, because it prevents all the damage, of course, so you can just drop them all in this nice, neat little pile. But if you want to, you can just run it around normally. You can use Shield of Vengeance as well to help survive a bit better with that. Now, of course, Wake of Ashes comes up, so you want to make sure that you do keep an eye out for that so you don't waste Holy Power with that. Now here I used Divine Storm just because I didn't want to sit there not building Holy Power because I was already at 5. And then again, stack up, 
here and we've got a bunch of stacked ads so I'll be throwing divine storms at them. You could blinding light as well if you want to go over to them. And if Wake of Ash is available, of course, you would use that as well on the little ads because it does a lot of your damage there. Now, once she goes into bird form, it's pretty much kind of target dummy-ish until the next platform. So just do DPS and stay close. Now, if you get tornadoes, of course, take them to where you're supposed to. So not to be too far. Now, if you do get too far for gathering clouds, you can use Blessing of Protection or Divine Shield if you happen to have it. Or Shield of Vengeance, of course, to kind of help reduce damage. This is physical damage. So Blessing of Protection will make you immune to it. So it's kind of a really nice oh crap button. Now I dash over because we have Warlock Gateway. So I'm not too concerned about that. You can just normally jump over too if you have to cross the actual bridge. But that's kind of up to what you're comfortable with in terms of movement. Now over here we have people squishing the spiders so we don't have to DPS them. If you are supposed to DPS them in your group, make sure you are. Cleaving them down, Divine Storm, Wake of Ashes. Keep that judgment up, of course, for Divine Storm. Things like that. And I save my cooldown until we have our Bloodlust or Heroism. That's the call that they have, is that we do it on this platform. So I kind of wait for that. And ideally, you will have 5 Holy Power, and then you will spend it, or Crusade and then spend it. Here, I, I hit Templar's Verdict as I heard and saw Heroism go, so I kind of slipped that up a little bit here. But do try to build up the 5 before and when you're mid-fight for your burst and then just kind of go off to the races now at this point unless you get the tornadoes you're kind of just hitting a target dummy she doesn't really do much here that you can kind of take advantage of or have to worry about other than putting tornadoes where you're supposed to again if you do have to do tornadoes make sure you do take them out um, and use your ranged abilities your blade of justice your judgment stuff like that to do damage your divine storm if you happen to have the ranged bit on it and then it's pretty much the same stuff. When you go back to phase one, the spider phase, you will, of course, be doing the same stuff you did on the first platform, just with more stuff to dodge. So same idea, clear down the ads, take advantage of that wake of ashes, blinding light, divine storm, etc. But other than that, it's a pretty simple fight with some AoE that you can take advantage of and kind of keep an eye out for. And if you get to the third platform, same stuff, essentially, so... You just repeat, rinse, and repeat, and do your best there. For Ursonk, it's pretty much a target dummy with a little bit of movement, and some neat tricks you can do if you kind of get screwed by RNG. I use the same talents as usual for single target. Just Blade of Wrath again because I don't have super high crit. So start the fight, pre-pot. Do our cooldowns. Now we accidentally bloodlust heroism at the start here. Normally groups will do it at 30%, but either way, it kind of remains the same bit. Now, one mechanic you have to watch for is that focus gaze, that charge he does. If you're taking it as one of the soakers, make sure you use some of your ranged abilities as he flies away. I don't really recommend using Divine Storm even if he's if you have the projected one, because he tends to run back pretty quickly, and I wouldn't chase him that far. You see. You can get like a Blade of Justice or something, and then he zips right back. So save your Holy Power for Templar's Verdict, but you could use Blade of Justice and possibly Judgment if it's a good time to spend Holy Power anyway to kind of like keep some damage flowing on the boss. Now, if you do get chosen by Focused Gaze, what you can do is you, you, sh you have to make sure you run it through enough people, the right people, the right group. That's up to your group setup. But you don't have to run very far with it because you can use Divine Shield or Blessing of Protection to nullify the damage it does to you. And the only thing that takes more damage when you're too close to the boss and you're the target of focus gaze is you. So he doesn't harm anyone as long as you're taking it through the group that you're supposed to be. Now here you see the charge goes through. I need to not take it, so I'm up to his face. Unfortunately, that means I will get parried sometimes. So if you can find a spot behind him that is safe, that you know you won't get hit by that charge when you're not supposed to, then definitely use that instead. Other than that, it's pretty much a target dummy. You can use your defenses whenever you feel like you might take a lot of damage, your Shield of Vengeance mostly. Definitely sub 30% is when I would consider using more defensives if you're not being picked by Focus Gaze, because everything hurts a lot more. Also note, generally your second Crusade, and your, thus your second Pre-Pot, will probably be lined up with your Bloodlust or Heroism sub 30%. Typically, and that sometimes means you have to hold it depending on the DPS in your group, or they might blow this before it's up, depending on how high the DPS is. It's a pretty short fight generally, so 
expect that you will have to hold on to your cooldowns at some point. It does happen. It's unfortunate, but it's worth doing because that extra haste is just really, really nice. So here, just more of the same target dummy, you know, Folly Rotation. Make sure you try to dump your Holy Power as best as possible before you use Wake of Ashes. You see I used it there with one Holy Power because it was taking too long. I was getting I almost lucky RNG, but kind of unlucky because it wouldn't let me dump it all completely. So I want to keep it more lined up with Crusade. If possible, that's more important. And I dodged that charge, of course. And in this case, because we already Bloodlusted, or hero, hero we I can go ahead and pop my cooldowns whenever. So as soon as they're up, I go ahead, pop them, pre-pot, you know, and do as much damage as possible to kind of finish them up. Again, this is kind of a dangerous phase, so don't be afraid to use your defensive cooldowns on yourself, like your Blessing of Protection or Divine Shield if you haven't used it, and Shield of Vengeance, of course. Now, for Dragons of Nightmare, I've got the same talent setup, essentially, Blade of Wrath, Blinding Light for some potential AoE, and the fight will look a little different depending on how you guys pull it, and of course, what dragons you have for that week. So, some groups will now put them together for a couple stacks and then pull them apart for maximum cleave. You don't really change much in your rotation, you still Templar's Verdict, just enjoy the extra free cleave from Judgment and Wake of Ashes, and then do your damage as best as possible. Single target rotation, burst, all that. Now, some things that you can find on different weeks that will help your cleave. If you have Lethen, you've got the Siphon Spirit ability, and it summons a bunch of adds. It's really good, of course, to Divine Storm on them, and also Wake of Ashes is really, really nice. One thing it does, of course, is give you big numbers because of AoE, but it also stuns them. They do count as undead or demons, so you will be able to stun them with Wake of Ashes, which is really, really nice. You can blind and light them to stop the movement for a brief second and do some extra damage as well. Now, other than adds like the Lethen Spirits or the Essence of Corruption from Emerus, you can also cleave off the dragons when they're transitioning, when you kind of when the tanks swap them. As long as you don't get too many stacks and like kind of screw yourself over. What you can do is you can do Judgment to hit them both. So two target Judgment. And you can Wake of Ashes if it's available. And it happens to just work out that way. Now you don't want to, of course, get stunned because a 30 second debuff where you're just stunned and doing nothing was bad for your damage, of course. And your Raid, Le Raid Leader would probably be kind of mad at you too. If we're trying to pad the meters that way. Do note though that Divine Shield will remove all your stacks. So it's kind of like a once every two and a half minute reset button in case you get a little too ambitious, you go a little too ham, you pick up too many stacks. You can also use it to immune the fear if you want to, but I don't because, again, I like to keep it for that safety measure in case I get too many stacks. Now here, dragons are switching, so I'm going to take advantage of this. Everything is up, I'm kind of moving. I will Judgment, a Wake of Ashes, you know, get that extra cleave. Why not? It's extra damage overall. It helps the braid out. And I'm making sure that I don't get too many stacks. As soon as Crusade does come up, though, you want to go ahead and pre-pot, second pot, I guess, and pop your cooldowns with it. Because typically you will you already have used Heroism or Bloodlust. Now, if you don't use it till later in the fight for some reason, then save it for that. Of course, always try to line it up with those big raid cooldowns as much as possible. So here I see Fear coming in, so I try to get my cooldowns rolling as much as possible like my Wake of Ashes, so I'm not having it sit there for a couple extra seconds just because of the fear. And then just single target damage. Now, don't forget, any AoE that happens or that comes up is something you want to take advantage of. So we're switching dragons here, so I'll try to kind of cleave off them a little bit, and I didn't have Wake of Ashes ready or anything like that, so I didn't really get to take advantage of that too, too much. Now, Shades of Terror, if you happen to have him here, of course you can cleave down. Make sure if, if you need to, if your group is kind of struggling to kill the shades, that you do focus them. And the one that you're focusing, make sure you judgment that one so that you know that you'll have that debuff to get you extra damage. In this case, I know the group's strong enough to easily kill them without too many, too many problems. Their tanks are fine, so I'm cleaving them down so that we can get maximum boss damage while also taking care of the adds. If you get Emerus and you have Essence of Corruption, it's basically the same thing, you can focus them, or you can cleave them down, just make sure they're interrupted, of course, you can CC them and interrupt, rebuke their casts. And that's pretty much it. So you'll get some variety every week as you switch dragons, but essentially just single target when you have to, and take advantage of cleave opportunities, either when they're transitioning, like so, and if you happen to have, say, Judgment up and available, so you can judge both. And then Divine Storm, if there's... I have Divine Storm there because the adds, the Shades of Terror are still there, but 
essentially just that Wake of Ashes, Judgment and Wake of Ashes for the transitions, if you happen to have them up. For Scenarius, same talent setup, single target. I got Blade of Wrath because I don't have enough crit for Virtue's Blade. And so we do Bloodlust and Heroism at the start, just to get through ad phases quicker. If you don't, make sure you save Crusade and Second Pot for that. Or if your Ray group has a chokehold point, like ads are, a particular ad setup is too difficult or very difficult, then you can save your Second Pot and Second Crusade for that instead. Otherwise, target dummy at the start, do as much damage as you can. Go ahead and cleanse yourself off in this little green pool before you go off to the ads. Now with the ads, you can cleave a little bit with your Judgment, which naturally cleaves, and your Wake of Ashes, which also naturally cleaves. So make sure you do take advantage of that. But other than that, still Divine, or not Divine Storm, excuse me, but Tempo's Verdict to focus down an ad. It's only two targets anyway, so you might as well Tempo's Verdict, and it helps focus down the correct ad, which is good because you don't want to, you don't want to be cleaving them down together. Now, the Desiccating Stomp that you saw go off by the tree, do you pop a cooldown for that if you don't have a lot of melee, or if just to be safe anyway when you're in range of that, just so you don't die. Now we get back to the boss here, and I do catch a root, as you see, so a blessing of freedom if that's the case. Now, if you're asked to clear roots, you should probably be using Divine Shield and then running through them, because they do a lot of damage, so even though you could free them and kind of run through them, and you take a lot of damage. So you might be asked to do that, so keep that in mind. Now we're back to the boss, this is all single target here. Doing as much damage as possible. We keep him here, so we don't have to chase him too, too far. And just make sure before you run off to the adds that you wait for the the area to be cleansed. Otherwise you might accidentally make the game cleanse something else, which is kind of annoying strat-wise. So in this case I try to save some holy power. I accidentally judgment the boss, so it's on cooldown, so I couldn't judgment the sister here. So I spend a little holy power without that, but then when the adds get together, I will judgment, Templar's Verdict, Wake of Ashes, and kind of take advantage of the cleave. For the debuff, of course, you know, move out. If you do have it, you can freedom yourself to move a bit faster. And you can interrupt the sister, of course. For the dragon, just stay out of the breath, etc. And just kind of do single target damage here. So most of the time, you're not actually aoe at all. You're just taking advantage of your natural wreck cleave, which is just, again, your artifact ability, Wake of Ashes, and your judgment. And then you move back to the boss here. Do some damage. And I chose to hold Crusade, you may have noticed. Because I didn't, I knew those ads weren't troublesome at all, and I choose to use it on the boss because I want to push the boss as fast as possible to skip an ad phase. Again, as I mentioned at the start of this particular fight, you can use it on a chokehold point if TPS is a problem for certain ads, or just ads are just causing wipes. You can use it then, or line it up with Heroism Bloodlust if you happen to use it at a different spot than we did. Can I get rooted again because someone kited brambles through the melee, so just freedom and then go in and break free now. They told us to pull off the boss because he's getting very close to phase 2. So I go ahead and move a little early, which is why I didn't clear stacks, which is kind of bad. If this happens though, feel free to use your defenses. I rotate through Shield of Vengeance here. I pop it as I get really low, and then eventually it breaks through and my bubble procs. And at that point I'm like, I have to go clear. So I Divine Seed over and clear before the bubble goes away. Now phase 2 just pushed here, probably should tank damage. And so we want to finish up the ad very quickly, if you haven't already. And then move on to the boss. Now, on the boss, you're pretty much just doing as much damage as possible, of course. You want to cleanse this boss as often as possible whenever Malfurion is giving you that. As a melee, you probably won't be asked to break him out of the roots, but if you are, of course, you can use your ranged abilities, your judgment, your blade of justice to kind of help break him out without sending a bad stuff. Other things you can do. If your tanks call for it, you may be asked to use Blessing of Protection to reduce the size of that circle, especially if they're out of defensives and such. Very effective. If you're going to do that, make sure you cast it after he has started casting Spear of Nightmare, because he's locked on at that point, so it doesn't matter if they have aggro or not. Now, similarly, if you're in an emergency, you could technically tank a Spear of Nightmare by using, again, Blessing of Protection or Divine Shield if you still have it. Again, make sure he's started to cast it on you. So you'd have to taunt him, have him cast it on you, and then bubble or blessing of protection. And you can kind of emergency spot tank one of those and produce a very, very small circle in the process. 
You can also use Shield of Vengeance to try to take one, but you'll probably still get wrecked and put a huge circle down. But mostly you're just trying to do damage here. And if you get high stacks, of course, also use your Shield of Vengeance to help reduce that. And just kind of keep an eye out for Brambles. You can still Divine Shield and clear them if you need to. You could free them with Shield of Vengeance to try to clear them. It'll take damage, though. Now, you'll see there I just actually used Blessing of Protection on the tank as he got Sphere of Nightmare because I know they're running really low. And you can see the circle is tiny, and that's the basic size of the circle. So you've got a lot of utility and a lot of use that you can find in Phase 2 here for some of your abilities, and take advantage of them if you need to, because you can definitely save a pool like that. All right, now for Xavius, generally the same talent setup. I would actually recommend Fist of Justice for the ads in Phase 2, but I just kind of forgot to switch to that. So at the start, I will actually go ahead and typically pop my cooldowns. The Even if I get in Dream in the phase, first phase, your cooldown is shorter than the Dream. The Dream is 3 minutes, your Crusade is 2 minutes. So I'm not too concerned unless you happen to be able to get corrupted and fully like insane in the first phase. So if you do happen to be able to do that, you could hold off until you see if you're in the Dream or not, if you want to be completely safe. But because your cooldown tends to be shorter than the Dream, I'm not too concerned about that at the start, so I just kind of go off to the races, pop my cooldowns, etc. Also, they asked in this group for the melee to not be looking for the terrors and just leave that to the ranged. So, I especially didn't even bother waiting at all. So, if you get Nightmare Blades, of course, take it out to where you're supposed to. Try to use your ranged abilities if you are too far from the boss to melee him. So, you know, Blade of Justice, your Judgment, stuff like that. You can dodge them, as a small note, so if you can time it right, you can dodge them, but don't screw the group for that. Now, as soon as the horror comes up, whether you're focusing on the, the ad, or if you're focusing on the boss and cleaving the ad, it's all just passive red cleave, the judgment that bounces, and the wake of ashes, and then just use Templar's Verdict. No reason to Divine Storm, there's only two ads, or two targets. So in this case, we're on the boss, and you just do your single target rotation. Make sure they're close enough when you Judgment and when you wake up Ashes especially, just to maximize the damage you're doing to both of them, because it's important to do damage to both. So we just kind of go in here, do damage, do single target rotation. And if you need to, if you see the adds maybe pointed at you, you can move, or if you're about to get hit by the Cleave or a Nova, you could use things like Shield of Vengeance, some defenses, and so on. As soon as he gets into Phase 2, we will go ahead and kill the ad. So once that happens, we'll switch over to him, make sure Judgment debuff is ready to go. And here it switches, so I switch over to the add, and then try to finish it off. Now, as far as the Phase 2 adds go, kind of depends on what your raid asks you to do. Some will ask all the DPS to go out and kill them. And if that's the case, run out there and do your best to kill them. In this group, we are asked not to because we have enough ranged, and melee only hops in if they get close. One thing you can do if they do it really close is you can Hammer of Justice them, which is why Fist of Justice can be nice, just to reduce that cooldown so you can use it more often. So you see this ad gets really close over here. I try to do a little damage to it, but someone knocks it back. And then back to the boss and do damage. Now you won't always have Judgment available for the ads, of course, because it has a cooldown and they die pretty quickly. So if you are having to do ads a lot, make sure you just use your damage abilities as much as you can. If you have Judgment for them, great. If not, don't, feel, don't be afraid to Templar's Verdict just to pull them down. If you're not in the Dream when you're killing an ad, if you are doing the ads in Phase 2, make sure that you kind of start running away from them as they get low. Maybe have you know Blade of Justice ready to finish them off from a distance, but try not to soak the pool because extra corruption sucks. So here I get out of the Dream. So I have my cooldowns ready, so I build up 5 Holy Power, Judgment, Crusade, and I'll save my pot for Phase 3, because I know it's kind of coming up, so it's important to have that ready. Also, get used to the feel of your group's DPS, and if you have enough time to actually use Crusade, and still have it available for most of Phase 3. If you get Bonds of Terror, of course, do all the mechanics, move to your partner, your buddies. If they aren't moving fast enough, or they don't, they're running away from you, you can just use a defensive and try to survive, like Shield of Vengeance or Bubble. Divine Shield. And there you saw a Hammer of Justice, the ad, just to stop it from moving, killed it, because I saw it was getting close. But I try not to soak any corruption if possible, because I don't want to since I'm not dreaming. If you're dreaming in this phase, of course, 
do make sure you use Crusade while you're dreaming and try to get insane. Go you descend into madness, full corruption, etc. And if not, then just do your best to avoid all the corruption you can because phase three piles on the corruption really, really fast. If you're soaking puddles, make sure you've soaked them completely and fully. And if you're sleeping, puddles are a great way to get corrupted. They give you so much corruption. And here we have another ad, so try to finish it off quickly and then move out of the puddle. I pick up a little corruption, unfortunately, but you do your best to avoid it. Now, if people are mind controlled, it's unfortunate, but you do have to kill them, which might actually be pretty fun to you. It depends, I guess, on your group dynamic, but you can kind of do the passive cleave thing. You could should focus them to kill them. They're kind of high priority, but remember your judgment will cleave your wake of ashes if you happen to have it will cleave so make sure to take advantage of that and here we go into phase three now phase three is basically a race on the boss there's a lot of ads coming up the tentacles and stuff and make sure you soak the pools actually i notice a lot of people didn't soak pools at this point so we get a couple ads that we have to take care of but for phase three a lot of tentacles show up and you could pad your meters by popping Divine Storm a lot, especially with the projected one. But you really should be focused on the boss. So if you have Crusade, like, use it, line it up with Heroism if possible. Pop your second pot and do maximum damage on the boss. You will get Passive Cleave again. Your Judgment might fly off and hit a tentacle. Your Wake of Ashes might cleave a couple. But generally just focus on the boss and do single target Templar's Verdict. Now, again, if you're just going for rankings or something and your group is completely fine, feel free to pad, I suppose, but you know, kind of frowned upon in most guilds and <laughs> you try to kill the boss, so focus on him. If you get corruption, full corruption, it may happen depending on how long you're in this phase because you build corruption just from a lot of stuff going on and there's not much you can do to avoid it. Take advantage of it. If you happen to have a cooldown with it, you know, use it, but most likely you won't. Just enjoy the extra DPS and try to kill the boss. So, pretty much the race to the finish. Nothing changes for you, just do full single target. And hope you kill the boss before he wipes the raid. That's pretty much it for this video. Now, if you liked it, please feel free to hit it with a like. If you have questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. And if you want to see more content like this or when I post a new content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And you can always catch me live at my Twitch channel, link in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed. Cheers.